Hello, welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, we will get all the details about the upcoming Pumpkin Patch Fair at the Quincy Point Congregational Church. It's coming up this Saturday. Two of the affair coordinators are here to give us all the details. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, still kind of cloudy out there. It's 52 degrees right now. Could see a shower this afternoon. Could see some sunny breaks, too, but it really won't warm up much. Highs only in the upper 50s kind of steady temperatures this evening under cloudy skies lows in the lower 50s more of the same tomorrow the clouds win out we're at around 60 degrees a little warmer on Wednesday but it comes with some showers off and on throughout the day and looks like often on rain for most of the day on Halloween unfortunately with temperatures on Thursday only in the mid 60s cloudy 52 in Quincy right now. In the news today, there appears to be widespread support for a proposal to ban the use of plastic shopping bags in Quincy. About 20 people spoke in favor of that plan during a public meeting at City Hall last week. Ron McDonald of the Quincy Climate Action Network went a step further to ask that the regulation be amended to include a fee for paper bags. I support the mayor's ordinance request and my friends at QCAN who asked for a mandatory charge of five and 10 cents paper bag charge. I also ask that when this bill is passed, there is no outrageous period of time that is more than three months before implementation. In other words, a minimum grace period. The big companies out there, the big grocers, they've known about what's coming down the road. They don't need a year to get ready for it. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch has indicated support for the ban on plastic shopping bags, which he says will help reduce pollution across the city. Plastic bags used inside stores, like those for produce and fish and meat, would be exempt from the ban. And violations of that ban would carry warnings and then fines of up to $100. Quincy City Council does not want an out-of-court settlement with major pharmaceutical companies with regards to the opioid crisis. Officials have unanimously opposed acceptance of any settlements and are vowing to move forward with a major class action lawsuit spearheaded by Attorney General Mara Healy. Counselor at large Nina Lang echoed the sentiments of her colleagues in telling so-called Big Pharma that Quincy will not concede to a settlement. You know, the number of folks here in the city who have really banded together to get behind the effort to combat this problem. And, you know, particularly I, Laura Martin, I've gotten the pleasure of, of getting to know her over the years and um, to know the work that she's doing. Unfortunately, she has to do it because this problem is in front of us. But uh, I think that this is an important stance for us to take and to continue to work together um, to combat this very serious issue. It's still very much in front of us. It's still very much in the forefront of a lot of people's minds, particularly here in the city. Um, and I think it's important that we, again, you know, hourly facing, take this stuff together to combat it. So thank you, and thank you to my colleague for introducing this. Mayor Thomas Koch also says he stands by the City Council and the Attorney General in proceeding with that lawsuit. The action came after two counties out in Ohio recently did agree to a $260 million out-of-court settlement with three major drug companies. Eastern Nazarene College in Quincy has a new president. The Reverend Jack Connell was recently installed as the 14th president of that 100-year-old institution during an inauguration ceremony. Connell has actually been on that job since last April. He previously held administrative and ministerial positions at colleges and churches in New York State. Connell led the largest comprehensive fundraising campaign in his previous school's history taking in more than $40 million. Connell said he looks forward to engaging with the entire Quincy community. Norfolk County Sheriff Jerry McDermott supports a piece of legislation that would require police officers and corrections officers to be trained on how to deal with people with autism. McDermott recently met with Mara Sullivan from Ark of Massachusetts to lobby support for the bill he says would ensure the safety and security of those with autism spectrum disorder. Supporters say people with autism require specialized communications skills and that people with autism suffer psychological trauma, physical injury, even death as a result of misunderstandings. 
Now that you're up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. It'll start with a replay of this program currently in Quincy today at 5 o'clock. 5.30 messages from the candidates in the November 5th city election. And then one of those candidates on AM Quincy, Ward 6 Council candidate William Eisenberg at 7 o'clock tonight. Then at 7.30, Quincy School Committee candidates Courtney Perdios on AM Quincy. Friday night's Quincy High Situate football game tonight at 8 on Channel 8. And at 11 o'clock, Democracy Now! Tonight at midnight, another At the Library concert series with Akiko Kobayashi. Check out Channel 9 every day, learn about Quincy City Departments, different committee activities. We'll start at 5.30 with Quincy in focus. At 6 o'clock, Crime Watch and tonight's topic, College Safety. A new FYI from the Quincy Health Department at 6.30. Tonight it's Thoracic Outlet Syndrome. So and the Mass Joint Committee on Education meeting from October 7th tonight at 7 on Channel 9. To, uh, no more than three minutes. Get a complete program schedule over on our website. Just go to qatv.org and when you get there, click on program schedule. We always like to remind you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Check out our weekly ad too in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we take a look at a few of the current events and activities that are featured right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8. Please stay tuned. We're back with you in just one minute. Welcome back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities we're showing right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for you to know about, like Quinn Cycles. Their ride, the Blue Hill Ride, is coming up on November 2nd. You can meet them at the Bernazani Elementary School on Furnace Brook Parkway, 9 o'clock this Saturday morning. Don't forget, bring a spare tube. Check out their website, quincycles.org, for more information. The South Shore Viking Club of Braintree inviting you to their Yule Bazaar November 9th from 10 to 4 at their Quincy Avenue headquarters. Scandinavian imports, baked goods, jewelry, knit items, and this and that. All part of the fun this year. Everybody's welcome. There's free admission. You can call them at 781-837-7222 for all the details. A free legal clinic coming up at the Quincy District Courthouse on December 3rd from 6 to 8 p.m. Call 617-471-9693 or visit the website for the Norfolk County Bar Association if you'd like to learn more about that. And don't forget North Quincy High Class of 64's 55th Reunions coming up at the Adams Inn in North Quincy. To find out about it, visit NorthQuincy64.com. Just click on the 55th Class Reunion option for all the information. And if you have an event or an activity you'd like to promote, visit our website, QATV.org. Just download a bulletin board request form, fill it out and send it in. Get your message up here on Channel 8 too. Coming up, we will learn all the details about the upcoming Pumpkin Patch Fair at the Quincy Point Congregational Church. That's next. Welcome back. It is that time of year when lots of community groups, uh, churches, local organizations are having their fall fairs and festivals and crafters. And one of them is the Quincy Point Congregational Church. The annual Pumpkin Patch Fair is coming up this Saturday uh, from, uh, let's see, from 9 to 3 at the church on Washington Street. So we've welcomed the fair coordinators, Deanna Van Chagan and Ann Susadell, to stop on by and give us all the details and show us some fun things that you might be able to enjoy. So ladies, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Happy uh, nice. happy. To be here. Fall, happy affair, right? Yes. And uh, and for you, happy retirement. Thank you. 
Indeed. <laughs> yes. Uh, folks, I'm sure, will recognize uh, your name and face from just a few years that you spent at the yes. church, right? Fifteen years. Yeah. Fifteen marvelous, wonderful, inspiring years. Yeah. And but I give thanks for that. Obviously, yes. you're still very active in the church, though. Yes. I'm a pew sitter along with everyone else. And along with Deanna, I ring handbells, okay. and I make prayer shawls. And from time to time, I help out with events. And this year, there was a contest to name the fair. Oh. And because my name won the Pumpkin Patch Fair, I figured I better work on that fair and make it a success. <laughs> so here I am. Because your name is attached <laughs> to my it. My name so. is on it and I get a free lunch. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to the turkey gobbler sandwich next Saturday. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's not always called the pumpkin no. patch fair. No, oh. no. We had a contest. Oh, so. all right. What is, it, is it different every year or different every year? It is. Yeah? It okay. Is. But yes, it's always some, like kind of a, it fresh. some kind of a fall fair, Some though. kind of a fall yeah. theme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we were thinking about favorite fall flavors in New England. Yes. And there's apple, of course, so we'll be selling homemade apple pies. Okay. And you um, always want to have cheese, if you're a traditionalist, to go yes. with your apple pie. So Deanna can tell you a little bit about the cheese that we have. Yes, we have Cabot cheese. Of course. And uh, Straight from Vermont. Straight from Vermont. Yeah. I go right to the creamery and pick it up. Oh, you do? I do. Wow. Having grown up in Cabot. Oh, okay. Uh, it's one of my favorite places to go. Yeah, it's a beautiful and, place. And uh, so I, we bring down large chunks and we cut it fresh. Nice. For people, and it always tastes better when it's fresh. Oh, sure. Yeah. Than the pre than the prepackaged, although that's very good. Yeah. This is kind of fun. So the fair itself, Deanna, what you know, what is it all about? Why is it held every year? What does it do for well, the church? Well, it uh, there are a couple of things. Yeah. It it uh, brings us out into the community. It brings the community to us. Right. And it's also a very good fellowship building. Uh, tool for our church okay, sure, and it yeah. gives a lot of the people of the church a chance to share their talents and uh, their baking skills mm -hmm. and come together for a good cause. Yes, like and Ellen's uh, famous apple pies. Ellen's yeah. famous <laughs> apple pies. <laughs> Who's right? Ellen and why are they famous? <laughs> Ellen, well they're famous because she makes lots of them and everybody <laughs> loves them. Okay. They're really good. Um, <laughs> Ellen is uh, a recently retired minister who oh. has come to worship with us. Oh. And okay. they were there, she and her husband were there early on before she was a pastor and then they moved on so they could do their work. Yeah. And now they're back with us. Oh, very good. And uh, we had a pie making session last week. We made 30 apple pies. We have orders for most of those really? and now we're going to do it again to have some to sell at the fair. Oh sure, okay. And did the, did the money raised go to any one particular place yes, in the church? Yes, the money, the money raised goes to, partly stays in our church for uh, different projects, mm -hmm. but this year uh, half of the money is going to go to the I, to ISS. Oh, okay. Interface, Interface Social, Social Services. Services. Sure. Right. Very good. We don't, uh, we don't ever keep all of our money. Yeah for us. Yeah, well we, they uh, do tremendous work. And in some of the money will also be going to the new project that our church has just heard about, which is Build a Bed. Oh, okay, sure, I have heard of that. Uh, matter of yes. fact, they had a project last year in Quincy, right. over at the Quincy Credit Union. They had, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred people show up and actually build, build beds, beds for children yes. that need them. Yes, yeah. and we're going, we have some, uh, a group of people who are going to be going to Lynn, I yes, believe it, it is, is Lynn, to yeah. build beds. Oh, that's wonderful. So some of our money will be going there. Yeah, that's great. It's, you know, some of the basic needs that you'd take for granted that you don't even think of, um, but for, for a isn't, child. Um, isn't it, that the truth? It's so important, yeah, so that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, it's, this is a long event, this is nine to three, so it's six hours. Nine to three. Yeah, and it's yes. nonstop packed with entertainment, I'm betting. Well, we have, uh, we have uh, many things going on. We don't have a lot of entertainment, but uh, the actual, we, we set it up in kind of a boutique kind of way. Okay. Uh, we do have free coffee. Ah. This year we're having a co uh, free coffee bar. Okay. So if you are so inclined, you can have pumpkin pie coffee. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, and there's always good things to uh, buy at the bake table yeah. to go along with the coffee. And we have a wonderful lunch counter. 
Okay. So, and lunch goes from 11 to 2. And you'll see Anne there having her free lunch. So That's right. right. <laughs> Anne having course. her free lunch and enjoying That's it very right. much. That's right. Uh, in addition, you have obviously many different crafts um, that are available, and you've brought some examples with you. Yes, yes. We, we always have a fiber arts table. Fiber arts. So, our wonderful, and that's Deanna's phrase, which I love. Okay. And it's um, handmade oh. items. So, there will be knitted items, there will be crocheted items. This year, um, I had invited uh, the church school children to help me with a project connected with Trailside Museum yeah. in the Blue Hills. There is a small owl called a sawwet, and that's the littlest owl in New England. Okay. And she was hit by a car this spring on Martha's Vineyard. Mm. And a policeman found her, contacted Norman Smith at the Trailside Museum. She unfortunately lost an eye and injured her shoulder so that she can't be released in the wild anymore. Okay. Now, they have a special program at Trailside um, for animals that can't be released into the wild. It's possible for them to become animal ambassadors. If they are able to be trained and feel comfortable around human beings, which most wild creatures are not initially, then they become part of what's called the animal ambassadors. And they go with one of the staff members or volunteers to schools, mm. um, to senior centers, yep. to programs. And those little creatures help teach people about caring about nature and about protecting the habitats of the wild creatures. Sure. So our Sunday school raised money to be the wildlife guardians of this tiny, tiny little sawwet owl who is now an animal ambassador despite her injuries. Yeah. And so we are selling owl hats. Fun. What else? Hold it up what a else? Bit so there lots you go. of <laughs> lots of fun owl right hats in front of you. <laughs> and and other knitted and crocheted items. Okay. But anybody wants to talk about owls, I love to talk about owls. That's and great. then our logo for the fair this year yes. is a pickup truck yes. with pumpkins. Yes. And as Diana says, well, just truck on over to the fair and come <laughs> see us and, and have a chat and hopefully buy something. And so we have a number of items that have our logo on them. I see that. And yeah. then we talked about, well, where we have we seen uh, pickup trucks in the holidays before? And often around December, you see pick up a red pickup truck with a Christmas tree in the back. So we're going to have a red truck Christmas table, too, with oh. all kinds of items with red trucks and Christmas trees in the back. So if you're thinking about the holidays early, come get something. Okay, us. all right. Yeah. <laughs> now, is there actually going to be a pumpkin patch at the pumpkin patch <laughs> fair? You have, a, you have a pumpkins, Deanna? Yes. We do have pumpkins. We do, okay. We do have pumpkins. And we'll have a pumpkin table that will have all different kinds of pumpkin uh, foods okay. on it and some other pumpkin surprises. Pumpkin surprises. <laughs> <laughs> we have to leave a few things up to the imagination. Oh, is the great so. pumpkin coming? To no, the I don't think the great pumpkin <laughs> no. is coming, no. Um, no. Is there carving going on for the kids? Or? No, we oh. did that on Sunday. Oh, you did, okay. We did that on Sunday. Okay. So, no, there is not any carving going on. Okay, so the there'll kids, be no, no knives and sharp objects. No, <laughs> no, because it is after Halloween. Yes, that's right. So, yeah, November second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this so, typically when the fair is held? This, this it's coming usually weekend? it's usually sometime early November. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here we go. The first yeah. ones of uh, of the month, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we do want to uh, extend our uh, our best wishes to Reverend Kim Murphy, yes. who was unfortunately was supposed to be with us here today, but is uh, is not feeling well, unfortunately. So we hope she gets better soon and is able to be at the at the fair, certainly. And we we are hoping so too. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit more about what's going on, Deanna. Well, um, one of the things that I, I'm quite excited about is uh, we have a young girl that's a sixth grader that is making T-shirt bags mm -hmm. so that we do not have to use plastic bags. Right. And so you are going to be able to pick up one of these bags to carry the items in that you buy at the oh, fair okay. for a donation if you so choose. Very nice. And, uh, I, I think that's fun because not only is she going to have them there, but she's also going to show people how to make their own. Oh, no kidding. So you can go home and make your own t-shirt bag okay. and therefore get rid of the plastic bags. Well, we're going to need them in Quincy soon. A story in the news you may have heard about uh, the ban that, that looks like that's it's going to be approved. So that's the, uh, right. Many that's communities right. Are I'm, jumping on I'm, that. All f I'm all for that. Sure. Uh, 
We also have some other eco eco friendly things. We have an eco friendly area, and we'll be having some reusable straws that come with a brush, so you can clean them. Oh, really? Yes. I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we're going to try and get people into these kinds of things. We'll okay. have some bamboo items as well. Okay. So. Well, some of the I know some of the major uh, chain restaurants are, are are eliminating plastic straws now. You know, yes. for that reason. So yes. it seems to be the the trend. So, it is. Yeah. So we're we're trying to be right up there with everyone else, including mm -hmm. fair trade, Deanna. Yes. Yeah. Tell me um, about the fair trade table. We have a. Um, we buy our coffee at the church from Equal Exchange, which is a fair trade company that's here in this area. Okay. And they also sell wonderful chocolate. And we will have also some items that are from third world countries uh, with a serve table. That's S-E-R-V-V, -V, I believe. Okay. Um, and there's many things that are bought from third world countries that are going to be available to sell. And that money all goes to the third world. We do not keep any of that money for ourselves. Cutting out the middleman, essentially. Cutting. And, yeah, letting them exactly. sell their products directly to the consumers. Very good. Uh, and a silent auction? A silent auction. Yeah. This is for things that uh, maybe people have gotten in their travels that they want to bring back. Okay. Uh, we also have many gift certificates from area companies and restaurants Very and nice. uh, establishments that want to help that will help out our fair. Okay. So that's that's what you're going to find in this in the silent auction. And since our beloved Bruins are doing <laughs> so well now. Yes. We have a hockey puck signed by David Pasternak. Oh. And it comes from the game that they do once a year on January 1st that's outside yeah. And Bruins played in it last year. It's a, the New Year's Day game. The, the Winter NHL Classic. Winter Classic. Yeah. And it was played at Notre Dame last year. So the hockey puck has the Notre Dame insignia nice. on it. And David Pasternak, number 88. So for the sports fans, it's a little something for you at the silent auction. <laughs> and one of the other highlights of the silent auction is a photograph that our Reverend Kim took mm -hmm. and is uh, framed and that's going to be a silent auction item oh. also. She does very good, very nice photography. Oh, so. what is the photograph of? It is a center of a flower. Oh, okay. Very good. And uh, the, uh, the petals of the flower just kind of splay out, and you just concentrate on that center. It's very beautiful, yeah. very uh, calming and peaceful, but very pretty. And there's a Nova Scotia basket. And uh, Deanna can tell you more about this. Mm -hmm. There's a special special basket with a ukulele in it and ukulele lessons seriously <laughs> right. yes that's right straight from hawaii <laughs> straight, from <laughs> <laughs> straight from one of the people that are in our church oh okay that uh plays the ukulele is a teacher yeah and uh so that's going to be that's going to be a highlight. But we love our music at Quincy Point Congregational Church. So now we're thinking that maybe we need to be the first church ever with their own ukulele band I or the U band. <laughs> and and um, so I think that might be coming next year. Look for it. <laughs> Look for it at a church near our you soon. U, U band. <laughs> that's right. That sounds like that's a lot right. of fun. Yeah. We have just a little bit of time left, okay. but I know you wanted to touch also on your Thanksgiving ecumenical service. Uh, tell us a bit about that. Deanna. Yes, yeah. um, that is held with St. Joe's and St. John and it will be at our church this year okay. on Tuesday, uh, November 26 at 7.30. Okay. And we give a, a community service award every year. Oh. And this year we're very pleased to uh, give it to Leslie Bridson from the Quincy Public Schools. She is the coordinator of the McKinney-Vento uh, program, mm. and uh, she's also the contact for the foster care. Oh, okay. For the Quincy Public Schools. For the Quincy Public Schools. Very good. But and people uh, don't realize there are, there are hundreds of of uh, kids in our system that that are technically homeless. Yes. It's and yes. and this is what this project. This is what she. This is what her project is. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So that's the yeah. Tuesday before Thanksgiving. That's the yeah. Tuesday before Thanksgiving. At uh, seven thirty. Okay. And there will also be wonderful music there because it will be the 
combined choirs of the three churches. Oh, wow. Okay, very good. So that'll be nice. Yeah. But, uh, and for the fair this Saturday, logistically, uh, where do folks park? Where do they go in the church? Where's the actual activity happening? Yes, um, there's a parking lot. Our church is on the corner of Southern Artery and yep. Washington Street, which is a... Um, a major corner on the way to the bridge <laughs> yes and and there's a good sized parking lot okay. right there and the door that's near the street side of washington street will be open okay. and decorated and we will be there to welcome you okay and actually the long range forecast looks looks okay look, oh think, thank I you think, very <laughs> much <laughs> I think you're we appreciate be good. <laughs> it <laughs> thank you both really oh, appreciate the welcome. opportunity well, oh. thank you you're welcome hopefully get the word out for you just enough time to recap the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Kind of what you see is what you get out there. Clouds, maybe a shower. Highs only in the upper 50s. A chilly, raw night tonight. Ditto tomorrow. Worse on Wednesday and even worse on Thursday. <laughs> so, so there you go. But it's getting better for the weekend. I tr Trust me, it's going to be fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to Ann Zuzadel and Deanna Benchagan for joining us from Quincy Point Congregational Church. Thanks to our crew and thank you for watching. On Friday at 1130, we'll learn about this year's Quincy Veterans Day Parade on another edition of Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then. <laughs>